on and wait on him. Stay, Lord Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Oh, I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stay on Jesus. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stay on Jesus. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And good morning and welcome to Wayman Chapel AME Church School, where the Reverend Alan D. Edwards is our pastor. And I'm Sister Judy Jones, Sunday School Superintendent. This morning, let us all stand. What do we believe in? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and set it on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, church universal, the reunion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. O most gracious heavenly father, once again, we stand boldly before your throne just to say thank you, Master. Thank you for all the cool weather and the rain that you're bringing, oh God. Father God, we were so hot all this summer that we welcomed this cool air. Now, Master, be with us and bless us all and keep us. And Lord, let us not forget who you are. You're a God all by yourself. You're Lord, Master, and everything therein, Father God. You are our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings, and for this there is none other. So, Father God, give us the strength to uplift you and praise you and give you all the play, praise and glory that you so richly deserve. Yes. Now, Master, bless us all and keep us. Guide us all and be with us through the storms, through all the heartaches and the heartbreaks, all the disappointments, Father God, all the aches, all the pains, Master, for we know that you can bring us through this. And Father, right now, as we ask, we ask that you touch and heal in the mighty name of Jesus, wherever it needs to be, all over this land, all over this world, all in the churches, all in the jails, Master. Be with them and guide them, Lord, Father God, and let them know that you do exist. Now, Master, bless the sick, the shut in, and those who are afflicted. Bless those whom we've lost, Father God, for Wayman once again has lost a soul. Now, Father God, we ask that you lift his soul up and lift his family up in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, be with us all. Father, touch those and bless those and heal those that are going to bring the services today, Master. Lord, them all down in your bosom, Father, for you do have a word for this, your people. Now, Master, guide us all and keep us, and we ask it all in the dear Savior's Lord's name. Master, let us be mindful of the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, I'll be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Today's lesson is lesson number 11, November 13, 2022. Our title for today's lesson is Christ is Wisdom. Our lesson scripture comes from Revelation 2, verses 1 through 7, Acts 19, Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. The focus scripture, Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. Let us all read the key verse. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may all know what is the hope to which God has called you. Ephesians 1 and 18, commencing. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. That the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. All, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. That ends the reading of the scriptures. Reverend, it's now in your hands. Thank you. Christ is the wisdom. The Bible says, if we lack wisdom, we ask who? Uh, I would say if we lack wisdom, who, where we get our wisdom from? Ask that's God. God. That's God. That's God. God for it. Sometimes we believe that we are a little more wiser than what God is. <laughs> so we want to do things our own way. But what? But the uh, scripture says that if we lack wisdom, ask God uh, for the wisdom. Amen. All righty. Um, and this is the letter that Paul wrote to. Uh, the church at Ephesus, as he uh, he wrote it to the church at Ephesus uh, as he was on one of his what, missionary journey, and Paul stopped uh, to Ephesus, and he was witness to the people, he taught the people, uh, but as far as this letter goes, this is one of the letters he wrote while he was in prison, but he still had a love for the people amen and so he what he wanted to make sure that he would give them the encouragement that they needed in order to be able to continue to trust and depend upon upon the lord and let's look at this it starts on verse number uh, 15 uh and in so doing we find that uh, we look at page number 72 on the introduction it talks about uh, we continue to focus on the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesian church. Amen. Paul began uh, expressing admiration for these disciples in his salutation. As he was greeting them, he what? He showed his uh, uh, admiration and his appreciation for their faithfulness and, uh, you know, their commitment and dedication to God. 
uh, because they were going through some persecution. And, you know, we think uh, we have it bad now, but just think about what they went through during their day and time. Amen. And think about what Christ went through. Amen. And he said that if he suffered, then all who will follow after him and commit their lives to him are going to suffer too. Amen. So we just uh, trust God because we know he promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. Amen. Uh, he had never met uh, many of them. Talking about Paul, he had never met many of them. Paul was impressed with their reputation. Amen. Uh, reputation means a lot. It carries you a long way. Amen. And many times your reputation arrives before you do. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. People will, will hear about you because people talk. Amen. Whether good or bad. But we pray that as uh, professing saints, uh, born again believers in Jesus Christ, that what? That we have a good reputation. Our reputation will uh, match what we proclaim it. Amen. Because it's all right to proclaim uh, I'm a Christian, but then if your life is not living it, then your reputation, people going to know about it. Amen. Amen. And so Paul, uh, was again, was uh, impressed with that reputation. They were known, talking about the Ephesian people, they were known for their faith in God. Amen. They were known for their faith in God, which means what? That they believed that God would make a way somehow. Amen. Even what they were going through, they had the faith to believe that what God would bring them through it. And as the scripture says, weeping men do it for night. But what? But we have the faith to believe that joy is going to come in the morning. Huh? Amen. Amen. And we see we going through, uh, went through the uh, COVID-19 uh, and stuff and what? God brought all he wanted to bring through. He brought us through it. Even though we lost the many people. But yet and still what? God is still good, and he still made a way. Amen. Um, and they were not only known for their uh, faith in God, but they were also known for their love. Amen. Amen. Not just for their families, but what? For everybody. They had love for even if they had. But Jesus said that was the new commandment was what he brought. What? Uh, we always knew that well, we must love God. But Jesus said, well, now I got a new command that you must what? Love even your enemies. Amen. And so that's the love that what has to come from God, because how can anybody love somebody that you know, dislike you and doing all they can to destroy you? But if you got the love of God in you and you love God, then what God will enable you to have the love to look beyond their faults, look beyond their, their hatred for you and what still see them as what as a person that God created. Amen. Uh, at the bottom, it said, love formed the nucleus for their interpersonal relationship with their new identities as God's children. Amen. They were identified as God's children because of the love that they had for God and that they had for what? Each other. Huh? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is how they will know that you are my disciples. If what? I will, amen, if you love one another, amen, amen. Now, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes for church people to love each other. Uh, <laughs> amen, can you imagine that? We love, talking about how we love God and then we can't sit side, beside somebody. Uh, amen, we fussing and arguing and hold grudges and stuff like that. So what that mean? That mean what? That your action let people know where you really stand. Amen. All right, uh, on page number 73, it says, Paul uh, praying um, for a Holy Spirit inspired intelligence and discernment that will enable the disciples to know God better. So Paul, he wasn't with them, but what? Yet and still he was praying for what? For God's Holy Spirit to what? To uh, show them and to inspire them to what? To be able to... Uh, know God better. Amen. Uh, we pray, or we should pray, for God to give us the understanding and allow us to receive the meaning that he has in each message of the scripture. Amen. When we pray, we may not receive it right then, but what we pray, we still read and we ask God to what? Give us the understanding of what your message is 
in the scripture. Amen. And we, you know, I'm amazed how that when we read it, we may not think that it meant anything to us, or we may not think we're going to remember it. But then in the need of time, when you're thinking about something to say to somebody in reference to God, it's amazing how that you remember that scripture that you thought that you didn't, you didn't really think nothing of it when you read it. It comes back up because God brings it back to what? To your remembrance, all right? And so uh, he petitioned God for clearly focused eyes and hearts fueled by the love of Jesus Christ. Clearly focused. And what? That they were able to see God working in their life. Hmm? Amen. Remember the scripture tells us that what? Uh, God said they had eyes, but they couldn't see. Mm -hmm. Amen. It didn't mean that they didn't have natural eyes, but what? They were just, just couldn't see God working in their lives. Amen. And so Paul was praying for the Ephesians and all those that proclaimed uh, Jesus Christ as Lord, that what? That they will have uh, clear eyes, that they will focus uh, and their hearts will be what? Fueled by the love of Jesus Christ, which means that what? That God will be the center of everything, that we'll be able to uh, love God, love one another, and be able to do as Christ did. And that is the what? Show love to everybody to help everybody that he could, amen? And so that's what energizes us as believers in Christ to do the things that we do. Many times, I don't know about you, but many times people say, why are you always on the go like that? Why are you always doing the things that you do? I say, well, you know, it's because of the love I have for God. And I know Jesus did it, so what? We are his disciples, so what? We should be doing the same thing, amen? Where do we get the energy from? Huh? <laughs> Amen. Where do we get the energy from? Hey, what? God gives us the energy. If we have a willing mind and a desire to please God, God will give us what we need in order to fulfill our calling. <laughs> Amen. All right. It says, uh, primary agents are each disciple's heart reconciled to the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Uh, what? Um, our heart is what? Is um, again, what? Reconciled with uh, through the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which means what? Our hearts are fixed. That God that fixes our heart that what? That we be stayed on him. And our desire is to please God. Amen. With all that we have. Um, he says, pure, fertile hearts, nursed and empowered by the Holy Spirit are essential to reconciliation, salvation, and abundant living. Amen. In order for us to be effective as disciples of Christ, as witnesses, and as servants, we must what? We must have a pure heart. Amen. Pure heart. And what we pray tonight, God, Lord, please cleanse my heart. Isn't that what David said? Amen. Create within me clean heart and renew within me the right spirit. Amen. Even after David had sinned, what? He knew that what? He had messed up. And so now it was what? It was uh, an opportunity for him to acknowledge his sin and to ask God what? To get him right. Clean him up. Amen. And get him right. And we know that some people probably talked about David still. Well, he, he, never, he never changed. He's still the same one. But what? But because of his actions, it shows now that what that he had a different attitude and a different way of doing things, and that's why we can never count nobody out, regardless of what their past was. God has an opportunity what to clean them up and to make them what who He wants them to be. And, and that what He did, Paul. Paul was one of the main persecutors of him and his uh, people, the saints that were following after him. But what? But one day he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And Christ, what, changed him. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he changed him. And what? He didn't take away the energy he had, but what he did? He just redirected in a way that now all that energy he had against Christ, what? He was using now for Christ. Amen. So God don't, don't, don't reduce our energy and our desires that we have. He just refocuses in the direction that he wants us to go for his purpose. Amen. That's why it's hard for me to understand why when people... Uh, when we were in the world, we stayed up all night almost, watch, watch the sun come up and watch it go down, and still out what, partying and doing everything else. But sooner we come and say, oh, I'm a Christian, what happened? We get tired. 
<laughs> we get tired. We can't do like we used to do. But what? What? God didn't take the energy away. He said, "What? Now let us focus on what? On Him and what He is pleased with and what He has created us for. And that is to what? To be a witness for Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Huh? All righty. And so, uh, and we look at uh, the center of page uh, seventy-five. It said, the Holy Spirit is our divine counselor. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that was Jesus said when he said, I must return back to my father. But what? But he will send the promise to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will do what? He will be our teacher, our guide, our keeper, a counselor until what? Until Jesus Christ come back again. And have what? Whom Jesus declared will lead us into all truth. What is truth? The word of God. Amen. He will lead us into what? Into all truth of the word of God. What is the word of God really saying to us? Well, we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give us the knowledge and understanding of what does say, what does say uh, the Lord. Amen. And so when we uh, look at the, the scriptures now, we start with uh, verse number uh, 15. Okay, verse 15, it says, because, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord. Again, what was it? The reputation that the Ephesians had. Paul say what? I heard of your what? Of your faith in Jesus Christ. So that's what, that doesn't so that what? People do talk. <laughs> One way or another, regardless of what we do, somebody gonna talk. Amen. But we pray that their talking be what? Be the truth and show what we actually are about. Amen. Huh? Amen. And so and so Paul heard that. Why? Because he was in prison. And he, he wasn't there, but what? People were telling him about what? About the faith of the Ephesian people. Hmm? Amen. Now, how did they, how were they able to talk about their faith? What 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 uh inspired the reputation of the Ephesians to be carried forth that they are faithful? How, how did they recognize that? What you think? How will, it recognize, how will a person recognize you as being faithful? By what you say? Mm -hmm. By your action. Amen. You can you couldn't sit in that bench right there unless you had faith to believe it was gonna hold you, right? <laughs> huh? Amen. So what? So by your actions, what they were known to be faithful, and that's what Paul heard that what they were faithful. And when we think about what they were faithful, how how were the, the word spread about the Ephesians people being what? Being faithful. Now, we're talking about those that were what? Were a part of the family of Christ, which is what? The Christians. All right? Amen. They were what? They were faithful. And what? Because they were going through a lot of persecution. They were going through a lot of trouble. But yet and still what? They did not let their surroundings change them from what? Serving God and being faithful to God. Amen. Just think about now how easy it is nowadays for somebody to just turn their back on the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, could be sickness, but what? But we know God is a healer. Amen. <laughs> could be could be financial problems. Well, they can't have the finances. They don't have the finances that they that they want to have. So what? So they lose hope and they try to find all other ways in order to get it, whether legal or, or illegal to get their finances to take care of their needs. Hmm? Amen. But what happens is if we what? If we wait on the Lord, huh? amen, he'll what? He'll provide for all of us. He may not come when we think he should come or want to come, but what? He's always on time. Amen. And many times, I believe he holds back stuff to see if we really going to have the patience to wait on him and to believe what we say that he'll come out, he'll always be on time. Do we, are we willing to wait until God time comes? <laughs> are we going to do something to try to hurry him up? Huh? Remember Sarah, uh, Sarah, Abraham's wife, how what? God told him he was going to have a son. But what? Sarah knew she couldn't have none, but what? So she went and got some help. Huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. Trying to what? Trying to help uh, God's word to be fulfilled through Abraham. Amen. And so many times we find that we get impatient too. And what? and want to hurry God up to do what God has already said he's going to do, but we don't want to wait for him to do that, all right? 
But he said what? He said that uh, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the second part said, and love unto all the saints. Mm. Amen. Love to all the saints. Amen. Uh, not only faith, but you have to love one another. Okay. Uh, Christians are called to love others because Christ has loved them at the cost of his own life. You know what I say? For God so loved the world hmm? that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. He gave his only son. Amen. Now, if we love God, what are we going to give for him? Hmm? Uh, what's the main thing that we should give to God to show the love we have for him like he gave everything he had his only son for us? What should we What's the most important thing we can give to God to show we love him? Being faithful. Amen. And why do we praise him? Amen. Well, we have to recognize what he's done. Right? If, he, if you don't recognize what he's done, are you going to ever tell him thank you? <laughs> huh? Are you going to ever praise his name? No, because why? There's nothing that, that a person sees that God has done that what that deserves to give him praise. So therefore, what? Therefore, many uh, neglect praising God because they haven't realized that God is everything to them. Yeah. He's the source of everything that they do, regardless as to how healthy we are, regardless as to what knowledge we have. God has to be in it in order for us to do the things that we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. We wouldn't have the knowledge if He wouldn't allow us to be alive. <laughs> Amen. And so, and so Paul was what? Paul was, was, uh, was excited about what? About hearing the good news about the Ephesian saints. Amen. Which was what? Which was that, that they had faith in God and they what? And they also loved God and one another. Amen. So that should be a message to all of us. Huh? First of all, have faith in God, Jesus Christ. And then what? If we have the faith in them, then what? We're going to love one another. Amen. All right? And that is to what? Build each other up. Encourage one another. That's why when we think about don't forsake the assembling one with another, that is encouraging. Yeah, we can stay at home. Huh? Even now you can what? You can be on Zoom or, or wherever you want to be, but what? But if you have the energy and you have the stamina and the ability to come to the house of the Lord, why stay at home? Just think about where Jesus went from Bethlehem in the cradle to the cross on Calvary. And what he went through when he got to Calvary and had to go up the hill carrying the cross on his back for us. Uh, amen. He didn't give up. He didn't get away and well doing. Now just think about it. Now we have the energy and the ability to do all the things that we do each and every day. And just one day out of the week. <laughs> we, we we don't have the, the the desire to use that time to come and give God thanks in his house. Now I can understand it if you're sick, you know, and you're and you're incapable of utilizing the ability you have. But when you got the energy and the ability to do everything else you want to do, to go everywhere else you want to go, and then you say, I love the Lord, but you don't have the desire to come into his house, something wrong with that. Amen. Something wrong with that. Those are the things that God understands. Well, how can you have energy to do all these things and you don't have, have energy to come and praise me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. And so when you look at verse 16, it talks about now uh, Paul and because he saw in verse 15 about how that they were faithful and how that they had the love for one another and for God. Now in verse 16, they say what? He ceased not to give thanks for you. He's thanking the Ephesian people for what? For their faithfulness to God and for their what? Their love they have for God and for one another. Hmm? Amen. Which means what? He was praying for them to continue to be faithful. Amen. We have to pray for each other. Huh? Because what the, what the heaven says, somebody prayed for me. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, and so here's a what he says, uh, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. Even though Paul was in prison, but yet and still what? He had a desire to remember the church and to pray for the faithful members that were still carrying on the work of Jesus Christ. Hmm? Amen. There's always something each and every one of us can do to serve God. You may not can go, look, he couldn't go like he used to go. Amen, but what? But he still was serving God, what? Through praying for somebody else. Hmm? Amen. We may not can give like we used to give. Amen. But what? But we can still give God praise yeah. and to testify to others about what the Lord has done yeah. and what he brought you through. Because somebody needs to hear how good God is and how God works in each of our, each of our lives that may help them when they get in that situation to say, well, this, I remember, uh, I remember uh, Alan was saying this, that God brought him through. Amen. And so what? So I'm going to try him and see what he did for me. He can do the same thing for you. All right. All right. Paul, um, while he was in prison, afforded Paul time to spend in extended prayer. He said he ceased not, which means that he, not, he didn't pray 100% of the time, but what? But he never stopped praying, continue. He continued to pray. Amen. Why? Because he had the time. Now, what in prison, what can you do? You can think a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen. But what? But think about even then, what? He was still blessed. Yeah. Huh? Amen. And God was still speaking to him to do what he could. And that is what? To pray for somebody else. Mm. Amen. All righty. Let us go over to verse number uh verse 17 it said that the god for our lord jesus christ's sake hmm? he said what he said he ceased not to pray and now he said what that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory was he praying now he was praying, letting them know that what um i cease not to pray to who to god huh? <laughs> because he know he couldn't do nothing but what by praying to God, he understood that what God can work where he couldn't work. And God could bless where he couldn't bless. Amen. So don't just, he wasn't praying for himself. Huh? Amen. Amen. Now, don't you think God was going to bless him even more because he took the time? Why? When he in prison to pray for somebody else? Huh? God, if we take the time to pray for somebody else, take more of others than we do ourselves. Hmm? Just think how God will bless us. Uh, why? Because if we think of others and do for others, then what? Then who going to take care of us? What God going to provide for us? Hmm? Amen. That's why when every time I think about it, it says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Hmm? In the natural eye, a human size, how can you be better by giving more than you receive? Hmm? But what? But it's, it depends on our faith in God because if we give to somebody else, then what? then God sees our humbleness, seeing our generosity of caring for somebody else, then what? God going to bless us for what? For thinking about somebody else. Hmm? Amen. So don't hesitate when God tell you to give what we call our last. <laughs> don't you think God knows your last? But if God's spirit tell you to give it, then what? God knows that somebody needed more than what you do. We talked about that once in Bible study about what? About about uh, hoarding stuff. Mm -hmm. Holding on to a whole bunch of stuff that just sitting there. What was the intended purpose for being created? What's the use? But what, you hoarding it and you're not using it, so what? It's, it's being misused because you're not doing or using it for what it was intended to be used for. But then there's somebody that's hungry. Mm -hmm. How many of you have went in your, in your food cabinet and you found you got some stuff there that's outdated? <laughs> How did it get outdated? Huh? I mean, what? You bought it to use it, right? But you didn't use it. So what happened? Now the date on it doesn't expire. So what you do with it? You can't give it to nobody, or you shouldn't give it to nobody. What you do with it? You throw it away. So what happened? So you just misused 
what God had created for you to use. Why? And you was holding on to it and you didn't use it. You didn't give nobody else that could have used it. Amen. Huh? All right. And so uh, he said what? He prayed to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that what? May give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Hmm. What is wisdom? Knowledge, all right? Uh, so Paul was praying for the Ephesian people to what? To receive wisdom, which is knowledge of who? Of God, huh? <laughs> Amen, amen. So if they have the knowledge of God, then what? Then that should inspire them to what? To serve God and to do what God wants us to do. And that is what? Love him and love everybody else. Hmm? Amen. All right. Uh, verse number 18. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Hmm? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Which means what? Now, with the wisdom that Paul prayed for, now what? Now you have the knowledge and the understanding to what? To see what is needed to be done. Hmm? The result of receiving wisdom and revelation is godly enlightenment. Which means what? He enlightened. He opened our awareness of the thing that pleases God. Hmm? Amen. And once we understand now and know what pleases God as what? As being faithful as the Ephesians was. He said in verse 15, he said they were faithful. And they were what? They love one another. So therefore, now as they have been enlightened through the wisdom, it said now what? They are more, uh, more uh, capable now of what? Of realizing what God desires and how God is working in their lives that they can be more with the, better witnesses for him. Hmm. It means once we get the knowledge and understanding uh, in our uh Understanding has been enlightened, meaning that what? The thing we used to pass by, that we could have did something, meaning that what? Now we don't do it no more. Hmm? We take the time to what? To do what it is that we are able to do. And not to say, I'm gonna wait, somebody else gonna take care of it. Huh? All right, the second part of verse 18 is that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. He will what? He will enlighten their understanding that they may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So all that is now because of what? Because they have been enlightened. Huh? And they can see now by having the knowledge, which is wisdom, of who God is and what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Christians hope is more than a wish for the future because it is based on the actions of our God. Mm -hmm. Christian hope is not just about hoping for the future, but it's more what? Based on the actions of God, what God is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. The riches of the glory of his inheritance for us, we will uh, no matter what happens, we will experience it, the fullness of God's blessing. No matter what happens, we'll still see the blessings of God. Why? Because no matter how bad we got it, it could be worse. Hmm? I always look at it that no matter how bad I have it, there's somebody worse than what I am. So what? So that's a blessing. Huh? Amen. And we still greet it, which means we still got a chance. <laughs> Amen. Uh, all right. The calling here is general. Issue to all people to believe the gospel and put their hope in Christ. The calling. That's what we say in the second part of 18, right there. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. It's to what? It's to know, uh, it's to believe the gospel and put hope in God or in Christ. 
Responding to this call results in some immediate blessing. When he calls, do we hurriedly answer? Does Isaiah say that the Lord needs somebody? Here am I, send me. He didn't say go get somebody else. He said send me, right? God knew he was calling you when he called, right? Amen. So therefore what? Why hesitate? Uh, why wait to see if he's going to get somebody else? Do what, do what the Lord has inspired you to do or called you to do. Amen. Why? Because he already knows you're already capable. Because before he calls us, he's already made us capable. Given us what we need. Amen. All right. We may not always agree to what he called us to do. <laughs> Amen. Why? Well, I don't want to do that. Uh, He's going to mess us up. I can't do that. But what? He's already given you what it is before he called you. <laughs> Amen. Responding to this call results in some immediate blessings, such as forgiveness and reconciliation with God. The presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what? The presence of the Holy Spirit uh, is what? It brings us the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding that we need in order to what? In order to be faithful servants of God. Uh, no matter where we are in our spiritual walk, which means what? Some are not advanced as others are, but what? But as long as we walk it in the spiritual knowledge of God, then what? Then there's always room for improvement. But what happens is many times people get, get upset and frustrated with the walk because it's not as easy as they think it would have been. But then it's not as difficult either if we trust God and follow the guidance of his Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I, once I had a thought, uh, it's, it's easier to do what God says do than it, than it is to not do what he does. Because for one, you're not gonna have comfort. You always be upset or worried or feel like something is not right because you're not doing what God called you to do. In other words, you're gonna, you're gonna be convicted. <laughs> Knowing that what? I should be doing something for God, but I'm not. Amen, I ran a long time. Nah, but everything I said I wanted to do, I felt uncomfortable. Huh? Amen. It felt like something was missing. Huh? Amen. I was say, well, I tried this. Maybe that might be what it is. But I went, it wasn't that until I finally said, Lord, here am I. Wherever you want me to go to do, I'll do. And I thought about that when I was in Korea in, in 19, uh, 1995, 94, 95. I was in Korea. I got ordained in 1993, uh, went to Korea, came back, I was on my way, I was getting ready to come back from Korea, and uh, just came to me just as clear as saying, uh, Lord, if you just let me get back to America, <laughs> I'll go wherever you want me to go and do whatever you want me to do. I got back in October, Halloween day, 31st October, 1995, and they had the planning meeting. 10th district in Greenville, Texas. Uh, what, the next week, I think. I went to Greenville and was I Nella Jones from the uh, Austin Capital District. He called me, he, he was at the meeting. He says, Reverend, he said, I got a church that need a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, yeah. I said, yeah. I was thinking, I said, I just, I'm just getting back. <laughs> He says, he said, yeah. I said, well, where is it, Elder? He says, it's in Dimebach, Texas. I said, where? <laughs> I said, where's Dimebach at? Uh, and he said, well, you get in touch with Elder Keenan at that time, and she'll tell you. And so I called Elder Keenan, and she says, oh, yeah, I got a church in Dimebach, Texas that I need a pastor. And you, your name was recommended. And just then, just that quick, I thought about what I told God in Korea. <laughs> Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. <laughs> and I said, well, when shall I go? She said, well, wait. Now, that was coming up to, to Thanksgiving. I said, wait, uh, let me check with 
Bradford, I think his name was. Red Bradford, somebody from Waco was, was at the church and she says, well, uh, you know, he got a long way to come from Waco to Dimebach, whereas from Colleen to Dimebach would be shorter. And so she said, let me get with him and I'll let him know that, you know, if he wants to change and go to, uh, you know, want to change and go wherever they were going to send him at, and then you can go to Dimebach. So I said, okay. So she called me uh, right after Right after Thanksgiving, the next Sunday, she said, the next Saturday, she said, no, so he don't want to change. She said, but uh, uh, you get with, with Lionella Phillips, South Houston District, another county says, there's a church in Hearn that he's looking for a pastor. And that's how I ended up in Hearn. I said, wow. <laughs> I said, I told her, wherever you want me to go, I go. Amen. But what? But if you're willing and you desire to do God's work, God will always make a way. And know the first thing they told me when I got there, I said, where is your, where, where's your past there? I said, well, he lived in Houston, but he had problems making it from Houston to Hearn every Sunday. He used to call and say, I can't make it. Then the second thing they said, we can't pay you every Sunday, because only two Sundays. We can't pay you every Sunday. <laughs> I said, okay, what else? They said, well, that's basically it. I said, all right, so what the Lord sent me here, and I believe he sent me here, because I asked him, wherever you want me to go, I go, and he sent me here. I said, so I believe God going to make a way. Amen. That was the second Sunday of December, 95. And I says, starting the first Sunday in January, 2000, and, uh, let me say, 1996, we're going to have church every Sunday, because I said, I can't see why the church is being closed two Sundays, because you can't pay the preacher. Amen. And every Sunday, we started from the first Sunday in, in uh, January, 1996. We started every Sunday. And don't you know they didn't miss a payment? <laughs> they didn't miss a payment. And even after I got there, after a while, we, I didn't have appreciation for the first five years. I said, no, I said, we don't need appreciation. And six years started, they said, Pastor, we got to give you appreciation. And not only that, they said, we're going to give you a raise. <laughs> Amen. And that was for 15 years. Amen. 15 years. I say, see, so, uh, and they come back, well, see what God does if you just be obedient to the Lord. God will work it out for you. All right. Uh, so look at verse number 19. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to, according to the working of his mighty power? Paul used several Greek words that can indicate power as a way of emphasizing the exceeding greatness of God. And we know God is all powerful. He's ever seen, he's ever present. Amen. And so Paul was talking about what? Uh, the greatness of his power to us word. Amen. With what? He was emphasizing to them the powerful God, the powerful God that they serve. Hmm. Amen. Uh, verse 20 says, glorified, talking about glorified Christ. Verses 20 and 21. Um, which he wrought in Christ, which means now what? The power that Paul was emphasizing is look what he did to Christ or through Christ. Hmm? He allowed what? Christ to come into the world because he had love for his people and his creation. And then what? And then he had the power to work through Christ to what? Allow him to be crucified hmm? for the sins of people. But what? The greatest power came when what? When he rose, when he raised him from the dead, huh? Nobody else could have done that. So what? He was expressing the power that God has to what? Look, what it says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Hmm. Now Christ has the power. Amen. Amen. Verse twenty-one. It says, "Far above all principality." What are you talking about? The power now. The power of God is above every what? Every other principality. Huh? And what? Power and might and dominion and every name that is named. At the name of Jesus. Every knee <laughs> shall bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Amen. And so what? That shows how Paul was showing them how powerful God is. That what? That the now that he worked through Christ that what? That he has more power than any other nation on earth, any other thing on earth. 
-hmm. And finally, uh, verse 21 says, uh, not only in this world, but what? But in the world to come. Amen. In the world to come. Amen. So therefore what? Therefore God is working to Paul, even in prison, to what? To help the people to realize that God can do anything he so wants to do. Just to read the other two verses, verses 22 and 23, he says, and had put all things under his feet. Talking about what? God has put everything under Jesus' feet, under Jesus' authority now, right? Amen. And gave him to be the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. So therefore what? God has now given his power, uh, the power that he wants Jesus to what? To be in charge of everything he created. Huh? That's why Jesus says, I am the door. Huh? Nobody can come to the Father but to, Je but to Jesus because of what Jesus did by sacrificing his life for all mankind. All right? Life application, as we close, as we look on page 75, as we look at our mission and the uh, requirements to engage and discipline, uh, the need for prayers for ourselves and others becomes increasingly important. Even in these times, we need more prayer. Uh, amen. Growing closer to God and developing deeper faith were the purposes of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. He wanted them to know more about God and Jesus Christ and to what? Be able to have the understanding of his words. All right. The Holy Spirit is our divine counselor. Isn't that right? Humans enter the world with a strong sense of individualism, which means what? <laughs> we all think about ourselves. Amen. But God didn't create us to think about ourselves. Amen. It say what? Um, in Christ, we learn that individualism must be superseded by collectivism, which means what? We must think more about others instead of ourselves, and God will take care of us as we what? Do all we can to take care of somebody else. All right? Thought to remember. Nothing can stand against Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Christ is the wisdom. Amen. And he gives that wisdom to all who ask him for what? For wisdom, which is to know and to understand the working of God better. All right. Questions or comments? Questions or comments? Amen. All righty. Well, we thank, thank God you. for you. May God bless you and keep his our prayer. All right, Sister Jones. Thank you, Reverend. Bless you. We've enjoyed our lesson for today. We hope and pray that you'll take whatever and spread it. Now, if all minds are clear, let us all stand. Let us repeat the misfa. May the Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen. Good morning, all. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, Reverend. Yeah. Good morning, and thank you. Good morning. Thank you, too.